Hi, it's Daz again from PK Thornton Restorations, back now with another series of videos on our next project. We've got a couple of new projects that are coming that are really exciting. Uh, there's another one in the corner, which you can probably see in the background, but we'll get to that on another video up and coming. Today, we're gonna to focus on this car that behind me, which is a Lancia Familia Superleggera. Um, the client came to us to, uh, for us to do the panel work on this vehicle. It's going to be a full concourse restoration. So pinning into the car, it's, it's very difficult to see to the layman how this car has been built. It looks very rough underneath the body of the skin. It's a, uh, it's a lot of workmanship that was done very quickly and very roughly. Um, which a lot of people don't get to see. Uh, they, all they see is the beautiful Italian design on the outside, but when you see the underpinnings of the car, it, it leaves a lot to the imagination of uh, the quality control back in the day. Um, we're uh, gonna work around it and uh, figure out what the best pieces we need to do to remake and to repair. Um, there's a lot of pieces on this car that are, are factory standard but uh, a lot of people would want to replace and change them. But this being a concourse car, we can't do that. We've got to replicate basically how the car was from factory. Here's Chip now with a bit more information on Lancia's and um, some history on this car. Lancia's history starts in 1906 when two racing driver, Vincenzo Lancia and Claudio Fogolin, decided that there is more that they can offer to the automobile market in Italy, and in particular, a lighter vehicle that in the same time is affordable to the masses. And therefore, they created the Tipo 12. What we have here today is the Lancia Flaminia Superlera, an aluminium constructed body by Carrozzeria Turing in Torino, assembled uh, in Torino and delivered for Lancia customers around the world. Uh, many, many of these uh, fabulous convertibles ended up in America where they are thoroughly enjoyed over the years. The example that we have here is the Super Legera convertible and it came to us from one of our trade partners. They entrusted us to restore the aluminium skin and the, the steel chassis to a concourse winning restoration. I'll pass you back to Darren, who's gonna to talk to you more about this coach-built Lancia. Uh, the car came to us in one piece. Um, we've been working to uh, separate the body, as you can see here. This is the aluminium skins that have been taken off the body. We tried to do this as carefully as we can, not to damage them too much. Um, so it gives us a, a guide to what we've got to make or repair for the car. The, uh, the aluminium is in very, good condition really for the age of the car. This car was in production from 62 to 64, I believe, and um, it's, uh, it's held up quite well really in, uh, for an Italian car uh, where, where they didn't have any rust protection in the day. This was just literally laid over the top of the other car and wrapped to it. Um, so cross-contamination between aluminium and steel would be quite uh, common on this, but it has actually survived quite well. As you can see on the uh, steel tub, we've had this blasted so that we can um, see the, the real bones of what needs to be repaired on it. A lot of you might see on the arches all this wrinkled edge. This looks like it's been an accident or, or, or it's been badly repaired before, but this is actually how it came from factory. They just quickly shrunk the edge of the metal by tucking it to get it to fit underneath the wheel arches. Then a thin layer of uh, like horse hair padding was put there to seal it to the uh, outer skin. A lot of parts on the car are very similar to this. Um, it looks like when you uh, look at the car, it was originally a I think they were made as all fixed head coupes. Um, and then as you walk down to the car here, again, talking about some of the uh, workmanship, this is all done in the factory where you can see they've patched up the top rail to take the uh, roof. And where the panels were fouled in the aluminium skins that came in on that, they've just literally smashed them down to clear the aluminium panels. 
And again, as you can see, the roughly wrinkled skins to get it to fit underneath the rear arches. As you can see in the uh, rear arches as well, they've been roughly beaten in on these little kidney-shaped dishes to uh, allow for the roof mechanism to fold back into the car, which again makes me lead to believe that these, all these cars were fixed-head coupes originally, uh, and then they were adapted as uh, people requested a cabriolet. Talking about um, what looks like it's been repaired before, or crash damage or anything like this, a lot of it is in very good condition. Apart from, as you can see before in its time, the, uh, the floor pans in the driver and passenger side have been repaired before and a plate has been roughly placed in and brazed in position. We are going to uh, replicate the original floor pans and remake them in the house. So this will, will require us to make some tooling to be able to make press tools to uh, put the indents into the panels how they should have been originally. As I said before, this car is going to be a concourse condition car. So it means we've got to replicate the type of craftsmanship that was used in the day, which in the way that I was taught to prepare panels is totally different. We were always trying to get the best finish we can. Whereas in this, we've got to replicate the type of welding and the type of finish that they had done on the car to keep, try and keep it as original as we can in the uh, same uh, character as it was built. Um, which when you come from Ba uh, building very exotic cars, it's very hard to <laughs> try and make it look bad in, in some respects. Uh, but uh, we've got to do what the customer wants because again, this is a very rare car and we've got to try and keep it as original as we can. A lot of uh, people sometimes ask how you go about planning a car to build or repair the panels. When you look at this boot floor, you can see it's had a repair patch been put in before um, and there's some localized pitting from just normal age-related uh, rust. So I'll look at this and look at the best place of uh, either replacing a section of the panel or replacing the whole panel, um, depending which makes it easy to replicate. A lot of people like to put small sections in. This brings up its own problems when you come to re-weld a panel in. Again, warping from where you weld the panel, it then leads to you having to panel finish it and make the panel smooth again. As I was saying before about replicating some of the pressings, there's a lot of quite intricate pressings being put in the floor. As in a small restoration company, we haven't got the really big presses to be able to put these in. So I'll have to uh, replicate the shapes in a thicker material and then chase them in by hand to replicate the shapes that you see here. Um, we'll cover that in a later video so you'll be able to see the in-depth work that we put into it. As you can see on the back end, there is quite a bit of rust that has come through on this back panel. This is usually where water ingress or dirt is collected and not been cleaned out. Um, we'll be looking to replace this rear panel or make it new and uh, replicate the tube work if that, any of that needs to be replaced. Again, it's quite roughly put together underneath the, the lovely shaped aluminium body. But again, this was just for practicality and ease of uh, manufacture. So we separated the uh, aluminium body from the steel tub. Um, this was literally, this, the aluminium body was literally folded around the edges of the steel tub, very similar to how they normally do that on a door skin. This was done all the way around the body. Um, we annealed the aluminium panel and then peeled it back gently to try and minimize damage to the aluminium panels. Um, a lot of them are going to crack in that, so we'll have to go about trying to replace or repair parts of the skins. Uh, we'll weld in new sections and then mark it back on the car and edge it back to uh, replace them and to put them back on the body when it's ready for that. As you can see on some of these edges, this is what I mean about them being peeled back. These were literally wrapped around 180 degrees and clamped onto the steel tub to hold the body in place. Um, this was done all the way around the bonnet aperture um, and around the side of the door arches. Um, and then they were, it was only lightly held onto the tub with a few screws on the bottom of the sills through the bottom of the panels down under here. Um, they were obviously rusted in place, so they were just ground out so we could release the skin off of the body. The car looks like it's had a little bit of damage in a previous life where it's, it's, it's split a bit around here. It looks like it's been damaged a little bit um, and there was a little bit of filler on the body, but not too bad. 
This was taken to a, uh, a dippers that was put into an acid bath to remove all the paint and the uh, filler properties that were left on the car. Um, it couldn't be dipped with the steel body because you use a different type of uh, acid for steel as you do for aluminium. Because else if you used a stronger acid, you'd probably come out with just a steel tub and no aluminium bodies at all. <laughs> then you'd have to restart from the beginning. When taking the uh, body off of the steel tub, the, the seal panels were very badly uh, corroded and were cracking quite a bit. So I just literally cut the seals off so those will be uh, remade in-house when we come to fit the body onto the car. Oh yeah, um, the doors, which uh, you, we'll show you some pictures of it, uh, later, uh, have been stripped as well. Um, and I've started remanufacturing the door frames, um, broke them down into their component pieces and remade parts of the doors and started to assemble them back together. They also have new aluminium door skins uh, wheeled up for this job because it's not worth trying to re-put those skins back on. We'll um, make the door frames with excess steel. When the car's back together, we'll swing the doors, set up the hinges, trim the frames to suit the car as it is, and then the new, new skins will be fitted. This is the first time I've worked on a Lancia, um, and uh, although it's a different car, it's a different mark, it's um, the same principles I use in all my res restorations or builds uh, will go into this car. Uh, you treat it the same way. It's, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's steel and aluminium, so you, you use the same skills you use on every other car to do the same work on this car. And of the period of this car, the manufacturing process is very similar through all the marks. And over the time of looking and stripping down cars, you can tell that these cars were put together in a very quick manner. Um, they were done most of the time. The, the employees were building them on piecework. So the more units they put out, the more they got paid. So they were just trying to get the guards out as quick as they can to earn the most money that they could. And sometimes this is relevant when you're looking at a car, you're thinking, oh, I've got to put this back together in the same way as they've done that. But ideally, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> but for this car, we have to. So the next step of this car will be um, patting the floor pans up to start making those. Um, I've been working on the exterior panels like the door frames and the boot lid uh, while we were waiting for the car to come back from the blasters. Now that it's back, the first step will be measuring up and working to make the uh, press tools that we're going to use to replicate the floors how they were originally. Um, and then once we've got this, the basis of the floor set, we can then start looking at stripping apart the car um, to repair any other pieces that needs repairing. Um, and try and replicate the, uh, the craftsmanship of the period of the day. <laughs> Here we have uh, one of the original doors from the Lancia that we were talking about earlier. This is this original state. As you can see, there's quite a bit of uh, corrosion on the door. And uh, we then uh, will go around the door and look at how bad it's corroded, what we need to repair or what we need to replace. As you can see on this one, to get to the inside of the door, we need to take off some of the original panels. So as you can see here, we started replicating some of the component parts that make up the door, ready to, when we take them apart, we can replace them with new panels. As you can see, the door is quite corroded inside and rusted away in several places. So as I said, to get to some of these places, we need to take the door completely apart. But before I do that, I tend to break the, door down into sections how it was made in the factory and then replicate these parts. So some of the components, as you can see, I've made the top section here. Um, also, we're going to be putting a new bottom rail on it. So it would be joined literally across here and across there. And we'll put a whole new bottom section of the door. We'll then study the uh, other panels on the door and check whether we can get away with just repairing them locally or whether they also need to be replaced. As you can see with this panel I've already made, um, that is designed to re replicate this part of the door and will be welded back in place after we've done all the other restoration parts of, of the door. As you can see, this is the other hand door of the Lancia. Um, we've already 
taken this one apart and replaced and repaired it ready to uh, accept its new skin. Um, as you can see, this is the sister panel. and uh, We've made them the same to replicate each other. As of the other door, this door was in a lot worse state. Um, the whole bottom rail was being replaced and uh, a few local repairs have been done on the door, which was deemed not necessary to replace the whole part of the panel. When it comes to uh, fitting this door to the car, um, we have left excess material on this door frame so that we can uh, set it to the gap of the car when we've put the original skins back on it. Also, as you can see here and here, are the slots to accept the door hinges. On this door, they were welded in position, so they were not adjustable. So again, care has to be taken when fitting this door that we get it into the right position before we finalize the weld position of the door hinges. Yeah, so the next steps for the doors, um, we'll be replicating the other hand door to look like this one, so all the repairs will be done. Then the next stage will be making the skins out of aluminium for them. This again will be done oversized, so the panels will be made oversized and then marked into the door frames after they've been set to the car. Then they'll be edged and refitted to the door frames. We'll come to the door skins at a later video where you'll be able to see me wheeling them up and fitting them to the car.